Hey guys, it's Jamie from Rubicon Miniatures and today in the studio we're going to be painting up my T34 26mm. We're going to be painting it to a high tabletop standard and I'm going to be taking you through all the techniques and colours that I've used. If you check the description below you're going to see a link to our forum and also to our Facebook group. We'd love to see your work and if you give me permission I'll put it into a community video so we can share it with the wider community. There's also a list of distributors if you guys are interested in picking up one of our kits. But please comment, like, subscribe and get involved in the discussion, we really love to hear what you think. And if you've got any ideas of what you want to see, let me know and I'll try to make it happen. I'll see you guys shortly. Hey guys, the purpose of today's video is to show you how I painted up the T34 76mm for our display stands at shows. As you can see I've gone through a winter camo scheme and it's really muddy and grungy. And that's what we're going to be doing throughout this video. So join me shortly and I'll take you through the painting process. So guys, let's paint this tank up. I've based it with a grey primer from Alclad, but feel free to use any primer you wish. I do recommend grey though. And for this first base coat, we're going to be applying Vallejo Model Air Mahogany. It's going to be our base colour for chips and it gives a great rust colour or red primer if you want to use this with your German tanks. I apply this all over and try to get a nice thin flat layer on top. You don't want to hide any details, so just take your time guys. And remember to get underneath the vehicle, underneath the tank and above. So that's what we're aiming for, a nice flat coat, it's not obscured any detail. That's what we're going to be going for throughout this tutorial. I'm also going to be doing exactly what I do to the turret, to the main body of the tank, even if I do not show it. The next step is to apply a satin varnish over the top. We do this because when we're going to be chipping away the paint layout, we don't want to be taking it down to the grey plastic. So this is just going to give it a bit of durability. Personally I use Liquitex varnish, but Vallejo is also good and so is Migamo. Now over the top of this we want to apply Migamo worn effects. Basically this is a great tool that when we apply a coat of paint over the top of, we can chip it down to the paint underneath without going straight through to the plastic. Apply this all over in a nice thin coat. The thicker coat you apply, the harder it is to weather. Now we're finally ready to be getting some green on there. For this I'm going to be using MIG Ammo Russian Dark Base Green. I apply this all over the red primer. And again, attempt to get a nice thin coat that's not going to obscure any detail. We're going to be working our way up through the modulation set, so the next color we use is MIG Ammo Russian Base Green. We use this to highlight the dark base green we've already put on and I apply it on the higher areas and also in the center of panels where we want to create interest. I try to get it along the edges of fuel tanks and along any sharp edges on the vehicle. I also highlight the roll bills with this color, but this will be the only highlight they'll be receiving as I want to keep them nice and dark. Again, I do the same to the turret as I'm doing to the body of the tank. And then for the higher spots and also the centre of panels and the hatch on top, and I apply a little bit on the gun barrel too. And the next highlight is MIG Ammo Light Russian Base. And we're going to be applying this really along all the edges and in the areas that stick out just to create a bit of visual interest. It looks really nice where you've got this fading modulation effect and normally I'd be spending a lot of time on this but we're going to be covering up large areas of this tank with whitewash later so I'm not so bothered about creating high contrast as a lot of it is going to be hidden. I do like to apply some though 
because we do still want it to look good on the table. So hopefully guys you can see we're getting a nice modulated effect there. And now we're ready for the final highlight. This is MIG Ammo Highlight Russian Green. And this is really just an edge highlight applied with the airbrush. The airbrush does feather it out, so it's not going to be that noticeable. And if you want it to be more noticeable, just apply a couple of coats into the area you want to highlight. The more you apply, the brighter the colour and the higher the contrast will be. Do the same to the body of the tank and I really like these fuel tanks at the back in this box shape so they're going to receive a nice edge highlight with this colour. I really like using the MIG ammo modulation sets but the Vallejo one is also really nice and so is the AK interactive one. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the different variations out there. Okay guys, hopefully you can see from this little screenshot here, the, the modulation of it we've got going from dark to light. It's a great base green colour. Now we're going to be chipping this, and to do this I cut off the end of a cotton wool board to get a nice sharp edge. And I also get some water. Now you apply water with a brush to the model, and in the areas you want to chip, I drag that sharp edge along. By dragging it along, I create chips and scratches and there is I want back down to that mahogany colour. The amount of chips you do is completely up to you. As you can see here, I've only done a few. This is because I'm going to be putting a whitewash on, so I don't want it chipped too heavily because I still want some green on there. Now we've got to varnish the model. Basically this is to protect it because otherwise when we apply decals with water we'll create more chips that we didn't want to. I use a satin varnish for this because that's going to make a nice flat layer for the decals to stick onto when I put them on. Okay guys, I apply the decal straight to the model with some water and move it about so it's in a spot where I'm happy. And then I'm going to be applying some decal fix and some decal softener both from Vallejo. I apply these via my airbrush, but it's up to you if you want to apply them by hand, that's equally as good. I chose a red star because it's going to show up nicely against the white wash that I'm going to be applying in a bit. And I've also put a slogan on for victory. Apply a gloss coat over the top of the decals in order to protect them for when I'm weathering later. And also just to finally seal them. Now that glass coat has dried, I apply some liquid mask on top of the decals using a piece of old blister sponge and I splodge it on to create chips. I do this randomly all over the model as well, so that when I do my whitewash there will be some hard edge chips down to the green.
this step is optional and some of you guys might not want to do it. Some of you guys might also want to leave it here and have a green tank rather than a whitewash one. If so, you feel free to skip to the end where I start doing some weathering effects that would have worked well with a normal green tank as well as a whitewash one. The reason I'm doing this guys is because in some of the pictures I've seen, the crew have taken care to apply whitewash around decals rather than on top of them. Okay, now I'm going to start applying MIG ammo washable white. I'm going to apply this in two broad strips across the turret with a little bit on the gun. It's going to match up to the tank hall later. And this product is great guys. Basically you can take a brush with some water and start to fade it and move it around on the model. You'll see me do that shortly. You don't have to work too quick with it when applying the water, but the quicker you do it, the easier it is to manipulate the colour to get what you want. And water is also going to start taking off that liquid mask. I also find that water blurs the edges between the green and the white, which is exactly what I want. So this is how it appears in the field. Whitewash was often applied using any materials to hand rather than a dedicated paint, which is why we see so many faded whitewash tanks. Very few were actually painted in white camo inside the factory. Now I quite like the way that the red star shows through the whitewash, so I'm going to apply some more white over the top of this decal. I'm also going to do it to the Victory slogan on the tank and you'll see that shortly. I'm still going to take most of it off, but I quite like the way that we can have a bit covered by the whitewash but still visible. It's one of the reasons I chose a red decal for this vehicle. Here you can see what I meant about the writing. I quite like that effect. Now we're going to start painting the silver parts of the model. Any dark silver will be great for this and you paint the tracks, the machine gun, any extra track links and also the exhaust pipes. I use shadow lead from Andrea, but bolt gun metal or gun metal grey from Vallejo are perfect examples of other colours you can use. Now before weathering the model with enamels, we need to apply a gloss coat over everything. This is because enamels are white spirit based and we don't want to be affecting our paint job by stripping it with white spirit. I use Liquitex heavy gloss for this, but Vallejo and MIG Amos gloss would work equally as well. Now we're going to be applying MIG Amos dark brown wash for green vehicles all over the model. You don't have to be too neat when doing this because the cool thing about enamels is you can take them off the model layer using some older less thin out or white spirit. So as you can see I'm not paying any attention to get it just in the recesses because I'm going to be removing it later. Of course you can spend more time controlling this flow and it will save you using so much product and also save some clean up time later. but I just really wanted to show off that you don't have to be particularly steady handed for this task. I apply anywhere where two parts of the model join and where there's any recesses, nuts and bolts or anything like that. I do recommend using a synthetic brush for this guys because the white spirit base inside here will eat through your expensive Kalinsky sable brushes in no time. It will still damage the synthetic brush but these are generally cheaper so it's not so it's not as major. I 
We're going to leave that wash to dry for a bit and then we're going to start to take off the excess with a cotton wool board dampened in some odorless thinner from Migamo. You can also use white spirit or AK interactive odorless thinner. Basically you just drag it along the surface and it's going to leave that wash in all the recesses and in all the areas that we wanted shading. Hopefully you can see what I meant about not having to be too neat and how easy this actually is. But it's going to add a lot of shading to the model. We're going to do the same to the tracks and also to the rolled wheels using MIG Ammo's track wash. However, when I clean it off, I'm not going to worry too much about getting all the excess off as it does create a nice grungy effect and is a perfect base for adding some wood on later. Now we're ready for streaking effects. For this I'm going to use three different types of streaking effects, all from Migamo. I'm going to use rain marks, streaking grime and dark streaking grime. You apply these in a downward motion on the model like so on any side panels where rain and dirt would slide down. Make sure you hit any decals on there guys because we want to make sure that these look like part of the tank rather than something that have been stuck on after the weathering process. Now we're going to take a flat brush, dampen with white spirit and start dragging these out to fade them in. You do this in an up and down motion and basically it's going to blur the edges and make them look like natural rain or dirt marks that have fallen down the side of the vehicle. You don't want the brush to be soaking with white spirit or odorless thinner because otherwise you're just going to remove them. But one of the great things about it is if you don't like the effect you can have that option of just taking them away and starting again later. Now before we move on to mud effects the vehicle needs matting so I apply a matte varnish coat over the top once everything is thoroughly dried. Again I use Liquitex matte varnish but you can use Vallejo, Migamo, AK Interactive. And now it's time to add some mud. For this I mix Plasta and Mig Ammo's dark mud effect. And then I take an old brush and just slap it on there. Keep being careful not to leave any brush strokes which is why I use this jabbing motion. I also hit the front of the tank and also the rear where mud would be thrown up against the vehicle. And now using a cotton wool board, I splatter some mud up to the front and the sides of the vehicle. By doing this, it looks natural. And if you get any guys where you don't want it, just take some odorless thinner or white spirit and wipe it off. Now I apply an army paint, a dark wash, but you could use a black wash from Vallejo or a non oil wash from Games Workshop to all the metallic areas on the body of the tank. And I also apply a bit of it to the tracks to darken some mud areas. And now we're ready for a little bit of pigment to end the model. I use some black smoke from MIG Productions and I just apply that to the end of the barrel to represent gun smoke from where the shots have been discharged. I 
and I also apply some broken tiled ash to any of the exhausts at the back and underneath any vents. This isn't as stark a black as the MIG Productions one, it's got a bit of brown in there which is why I use it for this, so I don't want it to be too stark. Now all that's left is to apply a final coat of matte varnish to seal any pigments and also all the hard work we've done so far and our tank's ready for the tabletop. Hope you guys have enjoyed this, feel free to leave your comments below. If you come back later in the week you'll see a showcase video of this. And also don't forget to go onto our Facebook group and show us what you've done with your vehicles. I'll see you next time.